Moments with Trees is a two-year project focused on the trees and woodland of Neem Park in Peterborough. It began in April 2017 and has been funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. Thanks to National Lottery players, visitors to Neem Park have been able to learn more about the history and the beauty of the park's trees through a series of trails and guided walks. Trees are a significant feature of Neem Park and have a real story to tell about the history of the landscape. The good management of trees is also key to the future of Neem Park. Volunteers have had the opportunity to develop tree identification and management skills. Tree themed activities for children ran all year round and project updates with fascinating tree facts have been shared on social media channels. Moments with Trees connected with local schools, park volunteers, visitors and a range of partner organisations. This work helped to reveal the past, celebrate the present and shape the future of Neem Park Trees. My name's Hannah Keeley and I'm the Moments with Trees Project Officer. Since April 2017, I've held many tree-related activities in the park. We've had um, volunteer opportunities where teams of volunteers have come and helped us uh, with our tree management, tree planting. They've also helped us develop trails and areas in the park and helped us set up a photography exhibition. And we're doing all of this to celebrate trees in Neem Park, to raise the profile of trees in the park and to help encourage people's connections to trees and natural heritage. With the help of Rennie Antonelli from the Green Backyard Community Garden, groups of volunteers, Coppice Willow from Neen Park's Osier Beds, then planted and weaved the cuttings to create a 100 metre willow tunnel. We're building an entrance to the willow tunnel and um, this is very creative, it's just like a nice undulating pathway as you go through the Willow Tunnel. So it's, it's a chance to be creative because you can twist and turn and make little swirls as you go along. So it's a lovely thing to do and hopefully it'll be pleasant for people to walk through when it all gets established. We are from BGL, um, Budget Insurance Group, here in Peterborough and we are from the prizing team and these are volunteering they're trying to give a bit to the community um, basically the process is you use this um, digger or something whatever it's called to dig the holes you put in the willow tree which you can cut from anywhere and continue tying the tunnel connecting it together until it's all form one big massive willow tunnel and that's what we're trying to achieve today as you can see we're almost at the end of this section <laughs> Well, we're hoping to um, do better than every other team that has come here for volunteering. <laughs> so it just basically loosens, loosens up the fibres in the willow. Yeah, we're here on a volunteering day, just give back to the community uh, that we all live and work in. A bit of team building and uh, yeah, just a sense of well-being. Light trees. Mm -hmm. We think it's great to do something to the community and everybody bring their children and their uh, pets down for walks in summer and winter alike. I feel quite elated actually because it's just so lovely to be outside in the fresh air. It's so lovely to see something that you've done when you leave and you know it's going to be there when you get back again. We've been really lucky to receive amazing volunteer support from our corporate groups. Without their support, we wouldn't have been able to have created tree trails, planted trees and improved areas. Throughout the two years, we've had a team from Marriott Hotels attend and help us with various activities. We're from Marriott Hotel and we came volunteering to help our new park teams to do some Good works. So we've got a take care team at the Peterborough Marriott. So we just volunteer our time to help out the local community. Um, so this is just one of the activities that we do. We arrange them quarterly, um, along with other things like lift kits and things like that. So today we are taking all the bark off these logs and sanding them down to do tree markers. And then later on we're going to do some planting of trees as well. I think it's really important that everybody gets involved in environmental issues. It just lifts morale, lets all the teams work 
together, some people are working together who wouldn't really have that opportunity to go to retail. Um, yeah, and it just gives us something different to do, gets us out of an office, gets us some fresh air. So come here, do the, like nature work is a, it's a different, stress out. You get rid of all your stress, so it's nice. Yorkshire Building Society also sent many teams of corporate volunteers over the two years. Uh, one group we had worked on a recently planted hedgerow on Ham Lane. Here they were removing the weeds that were growing around them. This work's really important. It shows the ongoing maintenance needed when we plant trees and, and develop these areas. We're trying to clear the weeds from these trees that have been planted and um, the, the nettles were quite high. The they were indeed. Just clearing some old hedgerows away from letting new growth build and what have you. To promote an alternative route to Neem Park, we organised a tree hunt from Peterborough City Centre to Ferry Meadows following a picturesque walk along the river. Walkers met at Cathedral Square and from there we set off on the four mile walk to the park pointing out common species along the route starting with the London Plains along Bridge Street. To not just the environment, but to our health, as Hannah was just telling yes. us this morning. I hadn't even realised that, that we actually get health benefits from breathing in what they exclude. Information about this walk is available on the Neem Park website, where people can download a leaflet that includes a map and tree guide. Neem Park are very proud of their majestic elms outside the visitor centre. They were here long before the park was created and they are at constant threat from Dutch elm disease. The trees are 150 years old which is, is pretty unique in the UK because most of the mature elm trees have been, um, have been have the Dutch elm disease have been lost so which is, is very tragic so to have three trees in the park at that age we're very lucky. The trees are inspected um, daily through the summer months when the Dutch elm beetle is, is more prevalent so um, yeah they're inspected daily so the duty ranger first job of the day is when they come down to log on is they will have a look at the trees check them all around for um, any Dutch elm disease that looks present if there are any, if it does look that we have that one of the trees have been infected, what we normally do then is um, one of the uh, tree team will come down and they will hopefully arrange for a climb to go up and inspect the infected area. And if it has been infected, that will then be removed. The tragic part is with Dutch elm disease. If it's um, not caught early enough, it can be uh, fatal for an, for an elm tree. And sadly, we lost one last year um, through Dutch elm disease. We think it got infected in um, autumn 2017, but it didn't really come out until the summer of 2018. Um, and there's nothing we could do, so the tree had to be felled. Everyone was, was deeply shocked that we, you know, we finally succumbed to, to, to lose one of them. Um, so much care had been put into these trees. Um, we were all shocked, and I think, you know, for the tree team, to the visitors, we just, it was a very glum day to actually to fell that tree. Um, but we're hoping we can keep the free uh, mature elms going for a few more years yet. Moments with Trees coincided with the 40th birthday of Fairy Meadows, probably the most popular part of Moon Park. At the birthday celebration event, visitors could find out about the Moments with Trees project. They could decorate a tree slice, take part in a mini tree hunt and guess the age of a tree. It was a great day. We spoke to more than 350 visitors and children would say, I didn't realise the leaves are so different. There are so many different types of trees and I didn't know any trees and now I do. 
I feel Neem Park and its trees are an inspiration to musicians, poets, artists. Kate Paskin is a local artist who uses trees in her work. I've always enjoyed the trees. Um, they talk to you, they rustle, they, they give you um, colour, they give you shade, uh, they give you protection in the wind, but the most important thing is that they are looking after us. Can you see over there now, the light is just starting to hit those trees, those willow trees over there, it's just warming them up. And if you stop and look, you'll see that all the time. And, and then the shape of the trees varies with the light on them. I love this tree. The first time I saw it, I thought, you're talking to me and you're keeping a real watch over the park. And to me, I know it's a scar from where a branch is broken, but it's like a man in a tree and he's keeping his eye open. And you've got all the beautiful, um, lichen here. The form and colour in that is absolutely exquisite. I just have to uh, take one and I've captured the moment. Outdoor activities and nature studies are a huge part of being a cub or a brownie. These cubs and brownies came to the park, adopted a tree and learnt all about it. Hello, I'm Farah and I'm here to talk about the, the amazing Scots pine. Did you know the buds on the Scots pine are cones? The Scots pine has a special skill, it can regenerate itself. My name is Noah and I'm studying the crabapple. Unlike many trees, the crabapple grows singly. Sometimes woods will only have one tree and it is a UK native. Flowers in spring, sweet scented blossom is pollinated by bees and other insects. This develops into small green apple-like fruits, two to three centimetres across. The fruit turns red when ripe and birds eat the fruit and disperse the seeds. Hello, I'm Olivia and I'm going to talk about the beautiful silver birch. The bark is silver with dark patches. The silver birch is special special skill is to make furniture, handles and toys. Hello, my name is Oliver and I'm talking about the field maple tree. Its wood produces the hardest and highest density timber of all European maples and its leaf has five points in total, two at the bottom, two in the middle and one at the top. So five points in total. Its bark is very thin and bumpy and the sun is very good for shining on and off. Hello, my name is Lowell and I am going to do the ash tree today. The seeds of an ash tree are called keys and the wind scatters them from the tree. The ash tree products produces a substance like olive oil. It can be used in treatments or stump disorders. The wood of the astro is flexible and therefore perfect for making hockey sticks, tennis rackets, canoe paddles and musical instruments like a violin or a viola. Hello, I'm Eric and I'm going to tell you about the amazing Peduncular Oak. These trees have been for hundreds of years and the oldest in Great Britain is a thousand years old. These oaks can be really tall, growing 40 metres in height. They have smooth leaves with deep lows, smooth edges and barely any stem. My name's Ethan and I'll be talking to you about the beech tree. Miniature trees grow more than 40 metres. Male flowers are like yellow customs what hang down from stalks. Female flowers are in pairs surrounded by a cup, both appearing with the leaves on the same tree. Hello, I am Rory and I'm going to talk to you about the rowan tree. 
The rowan tree is also known as the mountain ash because they can grow well on mountains. Also, the leaves are similar to the leaves of the ash. They can live up to 200 years, grow up to 15 metres tall and are a native tree to the UK. The rowan leaf is a compound leaf, a leaf consisting of several leaflets joined to a single stem. Each leaflet is long and oval and has a jagged edge. They are in opposite pairs with, with a, a single leaflet at the end. After pollination, the white flowers turn into bright red berries with a seed inside. The birds eat those berries and disperse the seeds so more rowan trees can grow. Hello, my name is Maya and I'm going to be talking about the oak tree. The oak tree can live between 200 to 1,000 years old and can grow 45 metres tall. Hello, my name is Finn. I, I've been learning about the hazel, which is the deciduous broadleaf tree native to the UK. The hazel is so bendy it can be tied in a knot without breaking. The scientific name for the hazel tree is Corallus avena, aven, avenana. Yorkshire Building Society returned to support us with our tree species survey in the park. Here they received brief tree ID training um, and then they went into the woodlands, counted all the canopy trees and identified them. This is the first time the tree species has been recorded in Neem Park um, and it's really valuable work because one, it will help inform our visitors of what trees they'll find in what areas. Um, it will also help inform our park management plans and it will also be a historical record of the trees in the park in 2017-2018. At Halloween, witches' belongings were hidden in, in the trees around the park. Children had to go find those items and then identify the tree. After the tree hunt, we were all able to make uh, a broomstick uh, with the twigs and sticks that they've gathered from the tree hunt. The broomstick was a special broomstick, it was willow, so if they planted the willow when they got home, it would root and grow into a tree. Through the project we branched out to over 5,000 primary school children. Here workshops were based on the national curriculum requirements and they taught children all about trees. Trees are really important because they give us um, oxygen. Today we will be learning about um, um, lime, cherry, um, horse chestnut and silver birch. Trees have like, nice colours, leaves and they have nice um, fruits on them.
Between April 2017 and March 2019, we have engaged with over 7,000 people through the Moments with Trees project. The Native Tree Trail, the Willow Tunnel and the Sheet Wash Walk are the physical legacies of the project. The first ever park-wide tree species survey is incredibly valuable and then the Arts and the Photography exhibition have helped inspire and enrich our culture. We heard many stories from older people about how trees hold special memories for them and we have been delighted to see so many young people at the beginning of their lives creating their own moments with trees. <laughs>